welcome to the channel again. Well, we're doing another review today. Um, this is going to be another EMS bag. And this is the final one in the EMS bag series that we're going to be doing. And next, we're going to be going over um, military uh, type gear, like um, as far as military uh, bug out bags like the Mo the Molly 2, the Alice pack, you know, stuff like that. We're going to be go going through different um, bags and find one that's right for you. Also, we've got a couple more sleeping bags we're going to add into the mix too. Uh, including the military sleep system and um, the one that was before the one that we made a few weeks ago. So, let's get to the bag. This one is uh, made by Thomas EMS. This is the Thomas EMS Responder Pack. Okay. Now, when you buy this, you do not buy it with all the gear in it. There's a few, we a few websites where you can buy it completely filled. And it's like, I think, three or four hundred dollars. But I bought it... And I just filled it myself. And this is the one that I carry in my vehicle, in my trunk. In the trunk of my vehicle. I mean, it's very... It's wonderful. I mean, it carries a lot of stuff in here. This is a BLS and trauma pack all in one. I mean, you're not... I mean, you're going to be really surprised with what's all in this bag. It's incredible. Um, we're going to start with the out, outer pockets first. Um, also to look, it's got, uh, D-rings all over it, so you could attach this very easily to a rig or to a helicopter. I've seen a lot of, uh, air carriers and air evacs use these bags, Thomas EMS bags. They love these things because they attach and they're very easy to use and, I mean, just wonderful all-around bags. But I'm going to start with the side compartment here. And in this compartment, you're going to find a roll of tape, a military cat tourniquet, EMS shears, and some bandage scissors. And about seven pairs of gloves and some hand wipes. So that's what's in this little small side compartment. Uh, like I said, I really love this bag. I mean, it's very, it holds a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff. I mean, it, do, it doesn't look like it would hold much, but you're about to see what all this thing holds. It's incredible. Um, it does have quite a big uh, price on it. This bag new sells for about $114. That may not be a lot of money for some of you, and it may be a lot for others. Um, but you can also possibly find, find these on e eBay cheap. And you can possibly, you know, kind of, uh, kind of wiggle around the price a little bit. Next, we're going to do the front pocket, the main front pocket here. I've got, as you can see, three 5x9s. And it's got these little uh, securing loops, like elastic loops, come in handy. Uh, they keep it... You know, if the pocket swings open, you know, it's going to keep it from, fa like, falling out. Um, again, these two, uh, saline flushes, you can find these dime a dozen. You can find them on, e on eBay. You can get, like, tw 20 of them for, like, five bucks. Um, a pair of hemostats. 
some, sorry, a Vaseline gauze, and a bunch of 4x4s, like 20 4x4s all together. So, more wound supplies and trauma supplies in this one. Like I said, you know, it's incredible what all this bag holds, and you haven't even seen the half of it. Okay, so we got that. Next, the next side pocket. This is what looks like some airway stuff. So, we got some ammonia inhalants for if someone passes out. Uh, some surgery lube and some NPAs. Nasal pharyngeal air, airway kit in here. And zip that back up. I put the NPAs on the outside because if you got someone who's in a seizure that's a quick adjunct you can just shove like shove in. Um, now the main compartment. The sucker is awesome. Move the camera down a little bit for you. Okay. So now we're going to open this up. And you can see it has got compartments galore. And what's keeping this stiff is a SAM splint, which is along the side here that you can e easily remove and take it out and use it. So we're going to start up here. In the black compartment, I've got diagnostics. I've got a stethoscope. I have a pen light. Um, adult BP cuff. A thermometer. And probe covers for the thermometer. And a pulse oximeter. So that's what I have in this first pocket. Like I said, um, when they developed this bag, they developed it very, very well. I mean, you can fit a lot of supplies in here. It doesn't look like it from the outside that it would hold much. But as you can see, it, it holds a plethora of supplies and gear. And it looks like my wife just came in to join us. Hey, I'm sorry I was late. <laughs> Cooking lunch for him. Okay. So I just got done with this one with the diagnostic supplies. And more diagnostic supplies in the yellow one. Uh, including some baby aspirins. For chest pain victims. Also, a glucometer. You'll for... probably be very surprised at how much this thing actually holds. Yeah, we got a <laughs> glucometer here with strips and all the other stuff that you need. I was surprised of how much it held, to be honest. I was surprised he was a even able. We've actually watched other YouTubers and the other guys have never fit as much as he fit in here yeah I mean I I'm not gonna mention any other youtubers but if you see this same pack like dude let's say dude didn't know how to pack it at all and he was supposed to be at e EMT from what I learned from my four, uh, 14 years of doing this is maximize your space with these bags and be able to deal with ma many em emergencies as you can with one bag. I got a spare pair of gloves because you never can have too many gloves. And this is a large adult BP cup. So
So I've got an adult and large adult in here. And sorry for the noise, our cats are taking run of goes. <laughs> <laughs> and it all fits in here wonderfully. I mean that's the second one. There we go. So that's the second pocket, the yellow pocket and the black pocket. And here in the center, I've got two curl X's, two curl X rolls for heavy hemorrhage control. And orange. Orange is soft tissue injuries. And this contains a row of, co of Coban. It contains two of these ace bandages. And it contains two ice packs. And a military rolled Sam splint. So all that in this little compartment right here, this little orange compartment, was able to. So you've got diagnostics, you've got bleeding control on the outside, and uh, some airway stuff, which I'm going to get to the airway stuff next here. You will be surprised at all the the airway supplies that I was able to fit in this bag. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, I was surprised too. I mean, you have to know how to play uh, Tetris yeah. when you pack these bags to ma like maximize the space that you can use. And this is, you know, and you can see all the years. That's that's what I love about this. Now, next, the blue. I chose blue for airway because you know code code blue. And we got a CPR micro shield, you know, inside here. I didn't want to put the whole CPR fa face mask. I wanted to maximize my um, space. So I went with a micro shield yeah. with this one because I wanted to maximize my space while covering all my bases. So that's why you don't see a big bulky... CPR mask in this bag, although I could fit it in here technically, but I figured this is good enough um, Also Like I said surprise full-size adult bag valve mask in this bag a full-size BVM and of course a Berman airway kit or airway kit and all this is inside this blue bag yeah that that really is surprising how much this thing can actually fit I mean at first I had a co-worker of mine say it would be impossible to fit a bag valve mask in this bag and boy was he wrong yeah <laughs> he I found so a way. determined <laughs> I remember when he got first got this, I could just see the excitement on his face. He was like, I just got this bag. Oh, he got it from, I don't know where he even got it from. I think off eBay. eBay. He got it off eBay or something. And, I mean, like I said, I was able to do miracles with this bag. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. Everything fits in it. And it's e easy to get to. I've had to use this bag many times. Um, and you might think, is that all it's got in it? Nope. Like I said, this thing is terrific. And I'm about to show you why it's terrific. I love this bag more than you love Striker. <laughs> it has a zipper compartment along the lid hidden. And, take a look at this. You're going to love this. Ta-da. It's got more space and more stuff. 
right here. But they didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah. So on this little top one, there's one, two, three. And then there's one up underneath here I'm going to show you. Like I said, when they design this, man, they should get I like a gold the, medal. I forgot about the hand department. Yeah, <laughs> two extra gauze rolls, different sizes. And that's why I've got this. You know, this is more weeding control type stuff that's going to be in here. Next one. This is... Oh. Came out of the bag. Well, well Dana's pockets are tiny. Yeah, it's a tiny pocket, <laughs> but I mean, it fits a lot of stuff. Well, okay. Oh, trash. This here is a, tri a, a triangle bandage to use for arm sling. Hmm. So, I got that in this little compartment here. But you can put whatever you want. There's room for a second one, actually. I had two, but I used this for a car accident a while back, and somebody had what looked like a, a broken arm, so I had to try to stabilize it, so I used one. But you could put two triangular bandages in here. Mm -hmm. Next, this is a what's called a blowout kit. I know I've got a, uh, on the outside of it, I have a, a, cat, a cat tourniquet. Because that's what you want to get to first. Second, you want to be able to get to this stuff. This is a North American Rescue Emergency Trauma Dressing. This is a, a battlefield dressing. This is made for compression. And this is to be used for someone who has got a shot to a limb. Or even to the abdomen. You can wreck wrap it around you know it's for a bullet wound and also that goes with it is to use this first it's compressed gauze to start sh stuffing the wound as best as you can and then putting this on top of it to make sure that you can stop the bleeding okay that should put like gauze inside the bullet wound yep I never really imagined them doing it because I it's figured compressed. it would hurt. I mean, yeah, it probably does hurt a lot, but at the same time, you want to stop bleeding. Like, that's your number one priority is bleeding control on a, ba a battlefield because you're going to die very quick, very quick if you don't. Now, the last pocket on this is right here. Boy, are they in for a surprise. Yeah. And under here, I've got a 8x10, a huge trauma dressing, a chest seal, an Asherman chest seal, or this Bolin. It's a Bolin chest seal for penetrating chest injuries. Uh, also, this is a burn dressing. It's a, a military type burn dressing. And that's it. That's all that's in this bag. So you can see there is. I thought you had a splint thing in there too. Yeah, I, I already showed them the. Oh, okay. I have two Sam splints in here too, so. This bag has everything. I mean, everything yep. BLS to even mildly ALS with the chest seal. I but, personally like the bag too. Good. I love this thing. <laughs> and this is the lid to it. So you can see it. It, zip, it zips to it so it's easily controlled. This does have a lot of compartments. Like you'd be surprised. There's a lot of like hidden compartments in it. See it just makes the lid look like a big bulky lid. But in reality it's not. Just this but yeah I mean you can see this thing. It's very nice keeps everything in here no, nothing falls out mm -hmm. this is perfect for if you're stopping on the side of the road to help somebody this is perfect nothing's going to fall out yep. you don't Give have to worry test. about it. yeah <laughs> shake test shake test everything's inside 
these pockets and it's easily accessible the only thing you can't do is uh, with some some of their newer ones you can actually remove these which I, I got mixed feelings on that on being able to remove the pouches because you got more of a chance of um, sorry I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit here okay you got more of a chance of losing supplies and just like your bag getting messed up. So this is a very, very, very nice bag. For what it is, I mean, the a fire department I wor I worked at once had one of these bags, and they and that's per perfectly fine. Hang on. Oh, your aloe drink. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was saying, fire, a fire department was using this bag for a, uh, trauma bag. Just bandages and stuff like that. Which, that's fine. I mean, it would work for that. But this is, I've, I've turned this into an all-purpose, like, EMS bag. All-purpose. Like, medical. One thing I'm thinking about at, adding to this one... Because you can some sometimes come across it is putting like a tube of, glu of glucose in here. Yeah. In case I ran into like someone with low blood sugar or something. Um. I know it's from Utah. Yeah. Describe the logo. Yeah. It's from. Uh, it's from Thomas Transport Packs, Salt Lake City, Utah. And I mean, it's got only one white reflect. Reflective stripe instead of many, but I mean it's okay. It's very light. It's handy You can just grab it out of the back of your trunk go with it and You know save a life it's, it's the size of a book, but it literally fits a lot And you can yeah. even hook it up to a helicopter for air care as well. Yep, that's what I was telling them earlier you could uh, mm -hmm. Hook it up to a rig I mean, I, I love this bag. I mean, it's it serves the purpose for what I need it for. It's compact, and it's got all the gear I need. And, I mean, if you have any questions or if you think something's missing from it, which the only thing I, I can think of missing from it would be glucose, which I need to add, add that. But yeah. other than that, I don't think much is, is missing from here. I mean, this is like an all-purpose everything bag yeah. um, all the gear you put you put in this bag you're probably going to be spending a couple hundred bucks so if you get into this hop I call it hobby slash prepping slash just doing my job being an EMT you know I want to have this gear handy and this is everything to support someone who is either a not bre not breathing, cardiac arrest. You can deal with a gunshot. You can deal with stabbings. You can deal with a heavy bleeder. You can deal with a small bleeder. You can deal with someone with a broken arm, broken leg, um, a sprain. You can deal with uh, a medical emergency. You know, you can check vi all, all the different vital signs. Um, yeah, and you've got a a, ba a bag valve mask, so, I mean, you're covered. This bag's got everything you could possibly need to treat a seizure, to treat, you know, anything. I mean, sky's yeah. the limit with this bag. I love this bag, you know. I I decided on, on this af after years and years, like, with my experience... I would say this is the best bag to keep in your car if you're going to be an off-duty EMT. This will hold everything you possibly could need for a car accident. Now, the only thing that's not in here is a seat collar. But, I mean, you could always th throw one in your trunk if you come up to a car accident where somebody's possibly got a... Which, I, I have one in my trunk. But, you can throw one in your trunk. You can't fit it in here. There's no possible way. 
there, is, there is a way you could fit an even more compact back valve mask in here. And you can find one. It's like a military BVM. They're, they're kind of pricey. They're about 50, 60 bucks. But they're compact. Like a, they, they call it a pocket BVM. Um, but this is great for what I need it for. And I'd definitely give it like that, that, that bag I would give a 10 out of a 10. Yeah. I mean, it's terrific. Can you think of anything I might have missed or? Well, no. Um, if I had to rate it, I'd probably rate it like about maybe like a five because only because like you can't fit everything in it. It's small. <laughs> it's too small for, um, what do you call those? A neck brace or C collar. Yeah. Um, you, ju you just can't fit too much in there, but it is compact. Though. Yeah, I mean, you can use that as a, sp a specialty bag, like a burn bag or a pediatric or yeah. trauma. Or you can do it for, you know, ALS probably. You could pr probably use that as a, dr a drug bag. Maybe. Or, yeah, well, yeah, you could put I, I, IV bags and You'd have to, like, your really I, IV <laughs> supplies and, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could. You could put your drugs inside of it and, you know, lock the, zip, the zipper with a seal or something like that. So, yeah, you could use that as a drug bag even. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, it's two thumbs up for me. I mean, it's, it's. It's a, a nicely engineered bag, and you know, it's even a good cheap bag for companies. Really, if they want to buy buy stuff for their EMTs to put on. Yeah, I mean, they're like a hundred and fourteen fourteen dollars a piece, em empty. I'm personally not an EMT, so I don't really know what goes on with EMT um, stuff. Um, but I do know they. I think they do carry bags, right? Where they put everything in their truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most of the time, uh, city um, life squads. If they're BLS or ALS, they're gonna have an airway bag. They're gonna have a pediatric bag, a drug box, a burn bag. Uh, C, C collar slash um, uh, cervical spine bag. What you learn about EMS is all the work that we do is in bags. Literally. We work out of bags. And we work out of an ambulance. I mean, with working on fire department, you know, that's why you got so many guys that show, shows up. Some people say, you know, why does a, fi a fire truck show up when an ambulance shows up? Well, let me explain this. You've got four guys on that fire, that, that fire truck, right? You've got another two on the ambulance. Possibly three. If you've got an extra or a, a, a newbie. So let's say at the most... Okay, fine. Let's... Let's do the least. Two in the squad, four in the fire truck. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. Let's say it's just a simple run. Let's say it's simple. Somebody's sick, throwing up, nothing life-threatening. Okay. One EMT in the back, one's going to drive, go to the hospital. Simple, right? Well, what if you go to a call sick person, and it tur turns out that they stop breathing. Now, you stop breathing, you're in full uh, cardiac arrest, do you really just want one person in the back trying to bring uh, bring you back to life, or would you like a team to try to bring, to bring you back to life? Because what's going on is, if there's a non-breather, depending on the circumstances, you're going to have one guy doing chest compressions. You're going to have one, one guy starting IVs. 
You're going to have one getting cardiac monitor set up and ready and get pads on and EKG leads. You're going to have one guy getting medications drawn up, uh, such as like um, epinephrine or uh, dop dopamine or, you know, whatever kind of drug that's needed for the particular situation. And you're going to have one person to ask the family member what what happened, what's their medical history, what do we need to know, what was they doing when they got sick, what have they eaten, um, what's their medical history. You know, you need one person that's going to get all that information and try to keep the family member calm, especially if, some, if someone's being worked on and being, you know, the or trying to save their life. So that's five people. And then you're going to have an, another person getting the stretcher or or the cot ready to go. And then you got four guys who can lift this person, put them on the cot quick, strap them in with all this stuff, with the, the monitor on them, the oxygen on, or in, uh, one, one person to control the airway even, to get a, a tube down them, to intubate them. Or if, if it's a BLS crew member, you know, to get a combi tube in, or a, an LMA or King, or whatever you choose. But that's why you need so many people, that's, that's why a fire truck shows up when you call 911 for a medical emergency because you don't know what's going to happen. You may send one ambulance there and then you get into a situation, which I've been in before, came over as just a sick person throwing up and got responded, got there with me and my partner and one other person, just three of us. Two of us was EMTs, one was just a, fi a fireman. He was driving. So, just me and one other person. Well, this person ends up sitting up in bed saying, I don't feel so good. And then they lay down and they're not breathing. So, you got called to a run. And you're having to get on radio and say, hey, I got a non-breather. I need an ALS unit and an engine company. Right now. So you got one and two, two, two guys. You've got your first end bag. That's all you got is a first end bag and an AED that you brought in with you. Okay. No, stre no stretcher. So the fireman who was with us, who was driving, went and got the, st the stretcher. And while we were waiting, we were trying to work. The unit shows up. And then, once that happens, you got an engine company that shows up and, you know, you were able to, to run the code and, you know, help the person. So that's why you often see that. But, just wanted to go over that for you. So, if anybody out there ever had questions about, you know, why you see that, that's why. It's for your safety and to make, make sure that you're receiving the best care possible. Yep. But about the bag, it's awesome. It's a great bag. Yep. And, well, I guess we're in the video. And please subscribe, like, comment. Uh, we love to hear any comments. Um, yep. Let us know what you think about it. Uh, let us know if you've ever used the bag. Yep. Um, What's, if you have questions about Chris's story, you know, feel free to ask, and he'll tell yeah. more stories. Um, with each bag we do, you know, he's gonna add some. He's gonna answer some questions some of you may have. So, like, start asking questions now, and then by the next video, we'll have we're gonna them answered. go over the bag, and then we're gonna get to your questions, and we'll. Um, just, you can ask us about anything. You can ask us, like, what we do, um, about his EMT life, 
Um, I actually teach yeah, f full time dads. now and do EMS as like a little side gig now. So I'm trying to. Yeah. I don't want to say ease my way from it, mm -hmm. but kind of back away from it because you know it's stressful, very stressful, and it can cause a, a plethora of problems and you know it can affect your mental health to where it's it's hard to think and you know but you know teaching is a good relaxation and you know it's so many people say oh te teaching's difficult you know it's like well we think it's more di uh, more difficult dealing with the kids or having somebody's hands in your life and, and having some you know they 13 year old te uh, teenager saying please don't let my daddy die mm -hmm. you know that's that's stressful but yeah but, I, mean, I could tell that being an EMT is very stressful like um, you get PTSD from it um, people don't really talk about PTSD but um, PTSD whether you're like you're in the military serving our country to you know being an EMT to being a police officer um, or um, a survivor of abuse you know there's PTSD and you know gotta w raise awareness for it you know um, PTSD is a really horrible thing to go through plus um, it comes with back problems. Yeah. Um, you sacrifice time with your family for holidays. Um, you sacrifice a lot by being in the interior. Over the years, I've worked countless Thanksgivings, Christmases, birthdays. I mean, you. it's really a lot of devotion that you have to put into it. And it's, it's hard when you have a family... Because, I mean, you often work long hours. Um, I personally know a guy, let's just call him A. And uh, the guy works like one to two jobs at a time. He works like 80 hours in a week. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him fall asleep sta standing up in a, ho a hospital waiting for a patient. I mean, it's not really safe, but I mean, it's, it's it's really bad because our pay is not that good. And you often have to work, you know, a crap ton of hours just to make ends meet. And that's sad. You know, jobs, especially public safety, should pay you a living wage to where you don't have to work 40 hours overtime in a week to be able to put food on the table and, you know, being able to keep your family afloat. But. I mean, there's some controversy on TV that people should, you know, like retail workers like me should be paid $15 an hour. No, I think it should be people like him that get the $15 an hour. The ones that are saving lives, you know. People are working in nursing homes being... EMTs. And I mean, also. But like I said, I mean, it should be people like him that's getting the $15 an hour instead of. Um, I mean. You can agree or disagree with me, but. Yeah, I mean, not to take, take away from the fact that, you know, people should be paid a, a living wage. I get that. But. You know, minimum wage is exactly what it says. It's a minimum wage. It's like someone who's got no experience, who is just getting into the workforce, mo mostly um, teenagers who are just getting a new job, who really don't have to pay bills, who really don't know have to do anything but pay their car insurance if they drive, and... Or their cell phone bill. Yeah, or a cell phone bill, maybe. But I mean, when I first start, started out as an EMT 14 years ago, 
I was getting paid nine dollars and seventy five cents an hour as an EMT. And that's that's really sad. And even on on volunteer fire departments at, at the time you make thirteen dollars a run. Which means I I would sometimes stay at the firehouse for twenty four hours and would get maybe you know, six runs in that whole 24 hours. So that whole 24 hours, I literally made like 80, 90, or 90, or 90 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I devoted my whole day to that. Well, at the time, I lived at home and it wasn't too bad anyway. You know, I lived at home so I could, you know, get away with not having to pay a lot of money for rent or, you know, pay a, lo a large amount of bills. It wasn't until, you know, I really got out on my own and, you know, had to work, you know, full time. And there was times that I worked for the firehouse and worked for um, a private ambulance, you know. There's some days I would go, like, a whole tw 24 hours, almost 36 hours without, you know, com a, a coming home. I would go from 12 hours... From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., working at my day my day job, and geez, and then after that you go to your firehouse job for 12 hours, and you know it's crazy. But anywho, we'll talk more about that later. But we hope you enjoyed the bag and the video, and subscribe and. God bless you all. Yep, and make and sure to God bless um, America. And make sure to um, post questions, and we'll answer them in the next video after the other, after the bag review, of course. But just um, comment questions, and we'll go through them one by one, and we'll answer them all for you. Yeah, the best right. we can. For now, see ya. Whoa!